Hello there and welcome to Spotty Polytetics. I hope you've got your Bibles and your drinks and your notebook ready. Jesus has been invited to this banquet or dinner by the Pharisees and the Pharisees are watching him. And it's an interesting evening because firstly he heals a, a person and then he talks to them about how they arrange their seating and then he talks to them about who they should invite and then this section is about the invitation itself and it's a great passage from Luke chapter 14 when one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things he said to him blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God but he said to him a man once gave a great banquet and invited many and at the time of the, for the banquet he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited come for everything is now ready so we can see that invitations have been sent out that this event this party this banquet is going to happen on a certain date and now the party is about to come up and so the servant is sent out to remind those that have been invited to come along but they all alike began to make excuses the first said to him, I have brought a field and I must go and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the crippled the blind and the lame and the servant said sir what you commanded has been done and still there is room and the master said to the servant go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled for i tell you none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Can you imagine if you had a dinner and you invited all your friends, your family and people you are associates with, maybe people at work on a certain date, say Saturday night, a, big, a nice big buffet laid out for you and got party games going on and got such distinguished guests coming such and such is coming and so you've invited all these people imagine how you feel if they all said well actually I can't come or I don't want to come or I'm too busy to come can you imagine that you wouldn't like it would you you'd be very mad especially if you prepared everything everything's laid out ready for the guests to come and none of them turn up you wouldn't be happy, would you? You might be compelled to invite your neighbours instead or people you hardly know just to use up the food that's there. And Jesus is talking to Jews, the Pharisees. They're the ones invited to this meal, the Jews, because Jesus came first to the Jews, but he was also open to anyone who comes to him. And that's true today. He came first to the Jews, but the Jews rejected him as Messiah. And so the invitation was held open to the Gentiles. And so other people outside Israel were, came into the kingdom of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And that's true today still. The covenant, new covenant is still open to everyone who will come to him including the Jews. We get a lot of mess Messianic Jews these days who are Jewish in faith, but have come to realize that Christ is the Messiah that was missed 2000 years ago. So the story goes on about the invitations and how they all made excuses. And they weren't even good excuses. It was like, oh, I'd rather be doing this or oh, I've got to do this and that's more important to me than coming to this meal, even though you invited me weeks ago and told me about it. I'd rather be doing this. My wife says I can't come. 
Um, I'd rather be with my wife. You can see, you can see every day anyway. The man with the field he's bought. Surely he saw his field before he bought it. Surely he looked at it. It's not going to disappear if he comes to this party or this banquet or this meal or wherever it was. The guy with the ox, oxen. Surely he's tested them out before he buys them. So that's another excuse, the lame excuse. But in the kingdom of God, you cannot make excuses. You are invited. If you've been at a meeting and you, you, you have a strong conviction that you should go, give your life to Christ at an altar call. Do it. Don't put it off to another day. You may never get another chance to hear the gospel. And especially if you are seriously convicted. If you're just doing it for emotions or to be part of what everyone else is doing, that's a false conversion anyway. If you are convicted in your soul that you are a sinner and you need to change and that only God, recognize that only God can change you, go, come forward and come to him. And you don't have to be in a meeting anyway to do that. I was in my home in a flat when I felt the compulsion to pray, repent and ask God into my life, recognizing I was a sinner and that I knew only Jesus could save me. And that was just pure conviction and repentance and faith in him. I didn't know or expect anything to happen, but from then on, I was different, things had changed for me. And 30 odd years on, I'm still here, praising God and still proclaiming his truth. So never make excuses. Wherever it is, if you're making excuses, you've got to be real one. These were making excuses that were feeble. They could have easily come to that party, that dinner or whatever. They could have easily come, but they preferred not to. They put it off as a light thing. It didn't matter. Oh, we'll come another time. You can't be making lame excuses. There's another parable in Luke where people made excuses. Oh, I won't serve you now. I'll do it later on. They made excuses as well. They weren't saying they weren't going to follow. They were They were saying, oh, later on, perhaps later on. In the, this, uh, my family's more important at the moment. But Jesus said, you should deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Later in this chapter, he talks about counting the cost. And you should count the cost coming to Christ. If something is more important to you than salvation, the well-being of your soul, you're not worthy of him because the wrath of God abides on everyone who doesn't come to Christ. And I want you, if you don't believe at the moment, I want you to come to Christ because time is short. We're seeing all the things that are going on in the world, the earthquakes in, in Syria right now, and all these calamities, and we see horrendous things going on all, all over the world. But if you are invited to Christ, do it. Come to him. Repent of your sin. It's not, Jesus talks about two incidents in Luke 13 where Pilate mingled the blood of the Galileans as he was making a sacrifice. In other words, he killed a lot of people who were making sacrifices. And then he talks about a, a tower that fell in Siloam. But the point Jesus addresses is, do you think they were worse sinners than anyone else? No, they weren't. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And... The gospel is this, for God so loved the world, he gave his own begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And unless you do, the wrath of God abides on you. No excuses. You can't put it off to another day. Today is the day of salvation. Don't make excuses. Don't make false arguments against the gospel. Like, um, 
what about those people in this other country who've never heard? That is a distraction. It's to, it's to question God's ability and God's God's love. God will deal with those people. The issue is you. And what will you do? So come to Him. If you can't say why well, you can't, be honest, and truthful, and God will give you an opportunity, another opportunity by his grace but if you are half-hearted like these three people were who said well didn't make a deal of it and think oh it doesn't matter i'd rather be doing this i'd rather be doing that like the man in luke 12 i think it is who had lots of possessions and he said well i've got not not enough room to store them so what he did is he destroyed his barn and then he built bigger ones and he stored up everything in there and he said to himself well you've got everything stored up for you you can relax be be and enjoy and, and enjoy your time and enjoy your life but god said to him you fool tonight your life is required of you you don't know when you're gonna die you don't know when what could happen in the next 24 hours that's why we should be careful not to be storing up things on earth because once, you, once your life ends here, you have an eternity, whether it be in hell or in eternity with God. And I want you to be in eternity with him, enjoying his goodness, enjoying him saying, well done, good and faithful servant, rather than being cast into hell, eternal torment, knowing that you rejected the gospel. That's not to put you on a guilt trip, that's, that's a reality. There's either two places you'll go, in hell, burning forever, in torment, or with God in heaven. And if you want to be with God in heaven, recognise your sin, repent, turn to him, and you will have an eternity. Because it's not based on your works, it's based on your trust in Jesus Christ, that he paid the price by your sin. And we live as Christians in gratitude for that, that he saved us from sin, a lifetime of sin and condemnation and wrath. But if we live for him, we will be blessed for eternally, not with things. Throughout the Bible, God has proven himself to be trustworthy. Even in this world, He all his promises have come true. All the prophecies have come true. There's not one that has failed. Jesus fulfilled lots of prophecies just in his crucifixion and his resurrection. So he is a worthy master. He is a worthy God and Lord of all. Because there's so much we can learn from the just the parables alone. And Jesus here was telling us parable at a party at a dinner that he was invited to. He used every opportunity to address situations, people. Even in a party, he could have stayed quiet and said nothing and then just enjoyed the party. But when he saw something that needed addressing, he did. And that's how God is with our lives. He wants things done correctly. He wants obedience rather than sacrifice. He wants truth rather than showing off and insincerity and and double standards he hates hypocrisy he wants us to be true to him well i'll see you soon take care god bless